have his support before the so it was very interesting to have his support before the album and after the album having my vocal coach there was really cool he helped me a lot so that's how i got ready for the album i had this vocal classes before some periods before the the album was recorded and during there i was still learning so much <laughs> recording by your by yourself it's something because you know what you want and you know what you want to do but having a vocal coach right there to correct you and maybe improve a the sound of a vowel that mm -hmm. you want to say it's very important so that's how i got prepared so you 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 wrote all the the lyrics and music it's you uh, yeah, uh, yes. also yes i i wrote all the lyrics the concept of the album is also mine mine i think it's it's important this way because I want to be able, like stage performance for me is very important and I want to be able to feel what I sing. And for me to be able to feel what I sing on the show, oh my God. and for me to be able to, to feel what I sing, I need to write about stuff that are nice, you know, to me, that makes sense to me, that are relatable to me. And the best way to have that is me writing all the lyrics and, and the concept. I always consult the girls tell that tell them my idea see if they want to suggest a, anything but in the end i'll be writing all the lyrics and as for the music this album the melodies on this album were mainly written by me and taina the guitarist luana wrote the melodies for lord of ruins but all the other mel uh, melodies i mean you know like the riffs and everything but The rhythmic session, mm -hmm. it was also, of course, the three of us, the one I had a huge contribution in the album. And, uh, but yeah, I was highly involved on the musical thing too, on the, the, the melodies. I, Trial of Traitors, for example, is a song that is like 100% my riffs. And there are some other songs that are riffs uh, from me in every song, basically. And, um, and yeah. <laughs> so I was very involved in in all aspects of the writing process of this album. And you choose to record this album uh, in Sweden. Now, uh, why? Uh... Um, act yeah, actually, the album was recorded here in Brazil. Yes, because it's economically more viable for us, because all of us are from Brazil. It's a little bit cheaper for us. And we have a very good studio that we record here called Family Mobs, very traditional studio here in, in Brazil already. And uh, so it's easier for us to record here in Brazil. And <laughs> it was mixed in Sweden by Daniel Bergstrand. Um, and yeah, we, we wish we could be there in Sweden <laughs> you know, like by his side to, to be, you know, like just to be joining the, the, the process and everything to be following the process, but we couldn't, we had to do it on distance. We were talking daily with the, with the mixing engineer, Daniel, but yeah, it was mixed in Sweden. We decided to record in Brazil because it was the most economically viable thing for us. It would be easier this way. And we decided to mix with Daniel and Master, with Jens Borgren. Oh, I, I didn't remember, but both of them are from Sweden. Because, <laughs> just because that, like, they are highly experienced engineers and we like lots of the stuff that they produced already and mixed and mastered. So we didn't have a lot of time for this process. So we decided to go, to go with someone we knew that uh, would do what we wanted in a fast way and would deliver high quality material. So that's why we went with those guys from Sweden. Um, I really love your album. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's a very old school, but also modern and little creepy sometimes. <laughs> 
I love it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> and that's what you wanted. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the feedback. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, that it's creepy sometimes. We love that. <laughs> yeah, it's a very dark album, right? Mm. Here and there, it can get really heavy and dark. Um, so for the music, musical side of this album, we didn't plan anything. With Crypta, everything is very organic, very fluid. Mm. We just let our creativity flow. Of course, we agree on what we want, like, yeah, it's death metal, it's gotta fit this way, but we just let our creativity flow and we were highly creative when writing this album, thankfully. And um, so what we did, what happened for this sound is we could identify what was the essence of Crypta uh, on Echoes of the Soul. Based on the feedback from fans, we, we knew what what they expected from us, what they expected us to sound, which is basically, you know, like a lot of aggressiveness alongside with like some melodies and stuff like that. So we kept that and we started to be more creative on top of that. So we want to make sure that the fans had what they wanted to hear, which is this very characteristic. But then we started experimenting from there. And then the thing is, um, I wrote this album with Dinah and I, I like roar thing, like this old school thing that you hear. There's a lot of me in there because I like old school sounding death metal, mm -hmm. like be, the, be, uh, like uh, Florida death metal and stuff like that. It's, it's my thing. So uh, you can find a lot of this old school death metal in there uh, but um, I also started enjoying like this me melodic part of crypto and I found out that what I like in Mel so and the thing is Taina she also likes melodies very much and she also likes this very dark emotional melody so what happened naturally is that our taste for writing matched so much. They were very much alike. They were very similar. So me and her felt very comfortable on writing melodies, but melodies that were not that epic, like they were on Echoes of the Soul, but more um, emotional. I think that's a, a more emotional album. So that's why it naturally happened. It, it's not something that we planned, but it's something that naturally happened because we had, we agreed naturally in this like more dark melodic thing. And, and as the, 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 can I say the word? I forgot, but this <laughs> duo thing, like this mm. duality, of like modern and old school uh, yes. metal. I think it's also because of our many influences. Because like me, I like old school sounding death metal. Luana too. But Luana also likes more melodies. And then Taina, she listens to everything, both old school. But she also listens to a lot of modern sounding death metal. So I think it's a mix of everything. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and I like that. Because you, I, I feel that when you are listening to Crypta, you never know what to expect because it's going to be like very aggressive. And then out of nowhere, there's going to be a beautiful melody like resurfacing. And I think that's the beautiful thing about Crypta. I think we are a big cauldron of different personal tastes and influences that together they work really well and, and become something unusual like how can you sound modern and old school at the same time? Well, we do somehow. Yes. And <laughs> I with really some like it. Instrumentals uh, with keyboard and. <laughs> For yeah, yeah, yeah. We really, because this is a, a semi concept album, um, we really wanted to have like this intros and outros and interludes mm -hmm. to make the listener remember 
that the album is one thing, that it has a beginning uh, and an end, you know, that there is a story, a, a beginning and an end to a story. And we thought that this instrumental melodies not only would be a good way of letting the listeners know that there's a story in there, but also to give some breaks, you know, in the album, because there's a lot of information in this album, technically speaking. There's a lot of things going on in every song. So having these breaks, I think they are healthy for the listener to digest the album. But mainly they were, their purpose in the album is to help tell the story. So the aftermath, the intro, it's a, a very sad track, but beautiful at the same time. At the same time, to mark the beginning of this journey through pain, which is the album. And then the limbo marks that period when you are struggling with a difficult, difficult situation and you suffered, 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 and you are starting to heal, but you're still not fully healed between what was and what will be. So that is the purpose of the track, The Limbo. And the closure is a more uplifting, like more beautiful melody to celebrate the end of a traumatic cycle, of a traumatic event. So that's that's the purpose behind all these little intros and outros. Okay. Um, I see you really love Slayer, your tattoo, yes. <laughs> the flag. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They are still inspire you? <laughs> They used to inspire me more when I was in Nervosa because it was a thrash metal band and Slayer is a thrash metal band. So <laughs> it was nat more natural that they ended up inspiring me uh, more. But they're still influential to me. I like how sometimes they create creepy vibes like in Seasons in, in the Abyss, you know, like songs like that. They have the, those intros with like very creepy melodic guitars. That still influences me a lot on Crypta. This, this these dark melodies that they have. I love riffs because I'm playing death metal now and even the style of picking can change sometimes and, and stuff like that, the, the rhythm and everything. But their melodies, their dark melodies are still a big influence to me on crypto, definitely. Um, do you think that your past in Nervosa um, brings you fans? To, to be well known or yes the same people definitely follow, I think follow uh, the band yeah I think I always say that crypto wouldn't be crypto without nervosa because it was a very important part of my journey and Luana's our drummer too she mm -hmm. was there in nervosa yes. too and uh and it's a part of our career and many people follow us now in crypto because they were following our career you know like mm -hmm. so the dimension crypto has today it definitely it's strictly history in in nervosa and i could know that on the begin mainly on the beginning our fan base was basically nervosa fans from <laughs> our era in nervosa basically because because that's where they knew us from mm -hmm. oh And that is something that I always mention whenever I, I am at a show at a merch table talking to fans and they come to me and they say, yeah, I follow you since Nervosa. And this happens a lot. I follow you since Nervosa. Last time I watched you, it was in 2017 or 18 with Nervosa in this city and blah, blah, blah. And it was very nice. And I always make sure I tell them, thanks for following me back then and also for bringing your support to crypto because it's a different genre right it's we're both thrash and death metal they're both on the extreme side of metal but it's a different gen genre death metal is different from thrash metal and i i love the fact that many fans that they were thrash metal fans they brought their support to crypto because of me and luana <laughs> and, and now we have a different history with crypto now we have people even from like other scenes that are not metal like hardcore we had a lot of fans from the hardcore scene for some reason and like lots of teenagers that didn't even know me in nervosa didn't even know like the, that we were in nervosa and they like crypto so now it's a different story 
But there, the majority of fans we have nowadays are still fans from the Nervosa era. But on the beginning, it was mainly them. Yeah, and I'm so thankful because if it wasn't the support from these Nervosa fans, we wouldn't be where we are. So I'm highly thankful for all of them. Um, I saw you made, made a lot of concerts in Europe, not in France. Yes. Yeah, but I'll, 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 I'll <laughs> tell you something about France. Um, yes, it's, we toured twice in Europe already. And France was not included. And it's so sad because first, yes. I love France. <laughs> I study French. I love, I just love the country. I know that we have some diehard fans in France. Like in every post we post, there's people asking us for to play in France. So yes. I know we have a fan base in there. And all my previous, amazing. We had a huge support there. So I really want to go there. So what I, I did like since it didn't happen on this last times what I did now we're gonna be playing Europe soon again not soon but next year the beginning of next year next yes. spring we have a tour being booked as we speak and I specifically asked our booking agent that territories that we hadn't been before like the UK and Poland and France <laughs> were included I made sure I was like hey we need to have friends hmm. already at the rooting of the tour the 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 draft of the rooting and friends is there more than a date and i'm right. pretty sure we're gonna make <laughs> that happen so so i really want to say sorry for the french crypto fans we love you i love you since the nervosa days and i can guarantee that on the next tour we're gonna meet finally and <laughs> with the new album longer set so it's going to be even better because of these tours. We only had an album, so mm. it was a short set. Now it's going to be a longer set. You're going to have a longer um, show, and I'm, I'll make sure it's going to be worth the wait. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Good. Um, about the art cover, what does it mean for you? Yeah concept of the album the concept album is a journey through pain mm. basically and the many different shades of emotions types of emotions that we experience when we are going through dark times and when i was writing the thinking of the concept of the album and actually writing the lyrics i am a tarot reader I read tarot cards and uh, there is this tarot, a specific tarot card that would pop up on my mind every time. And this card was the eight of swords mm. in the okay. cover. There's only seven swords for aesthetic reasons, but it is based on the tarot card, eight of swords, eight of swords in tarot. It's a card that represents in a cycle of pain and suffering and fear of being so, of having been suffering so much that now you are trapped in your own suffering and you can't get out. So, and it, it has a lot to do uh, with this album. And it also means that you are stuck in the cycle and you can leave. It only depends on you to leave this cycle behind. So that's what the Eight of Swords talks about. And that's what the, the artwork talks, talks about. The art, this artwork, is based on that. And so you can see the swore. And you can see that it's trapped because it's trapped in a fabric. It's under a fabric and there is candles there and there's the swords. If, if this figure tries to get up suddenly, it might get burned from the candles. It might get stabbed by the sword. So it's a tricky thing. But, but also you can see that there are ropes on the figure's hands, the, the ropes are not tied. So it means that calmly, patiently, the figure could free itself from that situation with a lot of care and, and live its life in full Thanks. So what the, the artwork talks about. Okay. So I think <laughs> uh, we talk a lot 
uh, but uh, everything. Do you want? Oh, that's uh, great. Do you want to add uh, something about uh, the album or? No, I think I'm good. I think your questions were, were really good. And Thank you. I just want to add, I just want to add that I really hope everyone likes the album. I really hope that the lyrics that are very personal to me, this album is extremely meaningful to me. I really hope that this album can embrace uh, uh, everyone who was going through the same things that I was going through when I wrote the lyrics. I hope you, you can relate to the album lyrically. I, I hope you can relate to the album musically. I hope you can headbang to the album. I hope you can cry to the album. I hope you can think to the album. I hope you like the album. <laughs> so that's a very important album to me. And I really hope you like it. Um, you think it's very different from the, the first one? More personal? I think it's a very... Yeah, 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 definitely. I think it's different in many ways. I think, musically speaking, Echoes of the Soul is rawer. It's, it's rawer because we were still, and it's more diverse because we were experimenting mm. many different elements to see what we wanted as the sound of Crypta. And musically, uh, I think Shades of Sorrow, although I love um, Echoes of the Soul, I think Shades of Sorrow is a more mature album just because we, we evolved as musicians, as songwriters naturally. And uh, we, we, ex we knew already what the fans wanted and we started experimenting, experimenting on top of that. And, uh, and lyrically, it's way different. Yeah. Um, the first album can be very personal also here and there. Uh, but, there's, but it's a more diverse album, lyrically speaking, that are very personal songs that are more mystical songs that are political, even political songs. As to Shades of Sorrow, it's a psychological album. It talks about uh, our mind and it talks about our, how, how our mind experiences pain in many different ways. That's what the album is about. And this is way, this is nearly autobiographical. Shades of Sorrow is nearly autobiographical because I, I wanted an album that people could relate to lyrically, like that they could listen to it and like, oh, I've been there. I know what you're talking about. But it's definitely based on my personal experiences. It's based on all the feelings I was going through and trying to heal when I was going through tough times a couple of years ago and uh and uh some of the words that you see there they are words that were in my diaries you know like because when i like to write a lot in my diaries when oh my god this little kid is behind you <laughs> so this is a baby such a baby my baby girl oh my god <laughs> such a baby girl good girl i love cats so much so yeah um this album is very personal i was when i was going through this dark period i was writing a lot in my diaries and to write this album i revisited these diaries and i read my diaries and some words that you see there some phrases you see in the lyrics there they were in my diaries i just translated them so that's how personal this album the soul yeah okay thank you very much for your time and your answers thank oh, you thank so... you for for allowing me to talk about my work i love doing this yes. and <laughs> it truly means a lot to be able to speak i think you guys from media are the are the bridge between us and the fans mm. you know uh, so thank you so much for your work Thanks for the space. You're welcome. Here. And see you in France. Yeah, it's going to happen. Year. April, May. <laughs> April, May, we're going to be there. Mark okay. my words. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice night.